Hi everyone, this is Ezekiel O'Callaghan with Raptor Chatter, and as you might have noticed, we are filming in a different room, and that's because my wife and son were exposed to COVID. And so I'm up here so that we can try and be separate because I'm diabetic and high risk. And so I know I normally put this, this PSA at the end of the videos, but please, wear a mask, be safe, don't go extinct. With that all in mind, let's get into the video of what the hell is Armadillosuchus? If you know the Greek language well, you probably already have some idea of what Armadillosuchus was. And if you don't, and you're hoping that it's something like an armadillo, I have bad news for you. Armadillosuchus is not an armadillo. In fact, it's separated from armadillos by almost 200 million years of evolution. So what exactly is it? An exceedingly bizarre animal, about two meters long, or around six feet, with protruding teeth from the bottom jaw and canine-like teeth in the upper jaw. It had robust neck and shoulder muscles. And finally, a large shield, very much like an armadillo's, and does the name, Armadillo Sucus. And we'll be getting to the second part of that name that tells us what it is. But first, what was this animal doing with so many bizarre adaptations? How did it live? And what can its behavior potentially tell us about what exactly the hell it was? Starting out with admittedly some of the less interesting features, we're gonna be looking at some of the bones. And that's only less interesting because there's so many other very interesting features in Armadillo Sucus. And because of this, there's actually not a lot of photos of these bones. In the paper that describes armadillo suchus, photos of these bones weren't even included, because authors chose to focus on the teeth and the shield plate, which makes a lot of sense, because those features do tell us a lot about what exactly armadillo suchus was. But as for its behavior, these other bones also tell us a lot. Specifically, to steal a line from Jurassic Park, It's a digger. But armadillo suchus wouldn't have been digging for fossils, instead digging for shelter and for food. And how exactly did it move all the dirt it needed to find that shelter and food? It had very thick and robust claws at the ends of each of its arms, which would have helped and been suited for moving around dirt and soil so that it could get underneath the ground. And the scapula was described as long and wide, which is something that's not entirely unlike that of a much smaller animal that lives today, the mole. Moles spend a lot of their time digging, and they also have a very long and wide scapula. This is used because it helps it for muscle attachments, that allow digging to be much easier, and it's much longer and wider than even similarly sized mammals today. So because of this, we can try and use comparative anatomy to say, yeah, no, this is very well suited for digging in Armadillo suchus. Armadillo suchus also had a very thick neck, which is something we see in a lot of burrowing animals, who need the head and neck stability more than they need head and neck flexibility. So this is another indicator that it was probably digging, and this then leads us into the skull where some of the teeth also indicate there may have been a lot of digging happening with armadillo suchus. And that moves us into the teeth, where we're going to be using this cast, which, for reasons concerning the teeth, I don't want to treat as completely accurate. Looking at the cast, there are some major issues, especially with the teeth. And that doesn't mean that this cast can't be used for education. In fact, it does still show the one feature that does show armadillo suchus is in a mammal. And that's the two holes at the top of the skull. This makes it a diapsid which essentially contains all modern reptiles. This is different than the synapsids, which only had these holes on the sides of the skull, and which also helped them to power their jaw muscles. However, this also means that the reptiles, in general, have more powerful jaw muscles, because they have that extra set of muscles helping to power the mandible. So while this cast does show this feature, unfortunately I assume budget constraints meant that they couldn't show the more interesting feature of armadillo suchus, and that's the teeth. Starting from the bottom jaw, there's two tusk-like protruding teeth sticking out from the front. On the top jaw, and specifically the premaxillary, the frontmost bone of that jaw, there's also two teeth that are very much like canines. And they aren't exactly canines. They evolved separately. However, they probably served a very similar role in helping to just grab purchase to different prey items even more efficiently. This moves us into the back teeth of Armadillosuchus, which actually do tell us a lot about its behavior. First, wear patterns that appear on the front of each tooth suggests that it was still moving through a lot of different kinds of dirt and soil, as the soil and dirt moving past its jaws would have helped to abrade the front part of these teeth more than it would other parts of the tooth. But this isn't the only set of wear that occurs on these teeth. In fact, there's wear in up to four directions on some of these back teeth. Combined with some muscle reconstructions and estimates of power and how they would have moved, it suggests that Armadillosuchus, unlike any modern reptile, could actually chew. This is basically completely unprecedented in modern reptiles. While it may appear that a lot of reptiles chew, they don't really do that. Chewing is a very specific kind of circular motion to help process tough foods. 
Meanwhile, most modern reptiles essentially just bite straight up and down, with the tongue being used to move food into that biting mechanism, as opposed to the circular mechanism, which is used in chewing. Altogether, what this means is Armadillosuchus is a very unique reptile. It had the process for chewing, tusk-like teeth that were probably used to help root up tubers and other plants that it could eat, and then canine-like teeth to probably help it grab onto different smaller prey. This means it is one of the best documented omnivores of its clade, and that's something very unique, is this isn't a clade that is normally thought about with herbivory. So thinking of that herbivory and chewing motion, what different groups of reptiles do stand out? And there is one that really does, and that's the dinosaurs, specifically Ornithischian dinosaurs. And so while we're trying to compare things like Armadillosuchus to the Ornithischians, we think what other features are there, including things like osteoderms, which are bony plates that grow up in the skin of many different reptiles, such as Gila monsters today. In Ornithischians, though, the best known osteoderms come from the ankylosaurs. And so is that it? Is it Armadillosuchus just a very, very specialized ankylosaur? which adapted to taking very small amounts of meat with those canine-like teeth? Well, the answer is still no, and that's because of a few specific features, including the shape of the osteoderms, which also help us to entirely remove it from the dinosaurs. In ankylosaurs, the osteoderms are largely very rounded, but that's not what we see in Armadillosuchus. Instead, we see more square and rectangular osteoderms, especially along the back, where the largest of the osteoderms are. And this, combined with certain features in the ankle, suggests an entirely different clade, one that isn't associated with any kind of omnivory or herbivory today. And that's the crocodilians. So there it is, Armadillosuchus is a crocodilian. Suchus in Greek means crocodile. But there's more to it than just that. Armadillosuchus and its lineage split off from what would become the modern crocodiles, at least in the Middle Jurassic, around 160 million years ago. And while Armadillosuchus did live in the very late Cretaceous, that means there's almost 100 million years that separates it from our own modern crocodiles. And when you look at this lineage that led to Armadillosuchus, it's important to note that it definitely wasn't alone. There was a widely diverse clade of land-going crocodiles during the Jurassic and Cretaceous that most people don't actually know about that well. And this clade had a lot of diversity. Badosuchus had large teeth for running on land and catching prey. Chimerasuchus had very much plant-eating dentition, much more so than even Armadillosuchus. And this would mean that Armadillosuchus, at least as far as diet is concerned, is somewhere in between these two, just showing how diverse this clade, the Notosuchians, were. But the Notosuchians weren't some isolated group. They're actually very closely related to modern crocodiles. They're what's called sister taxa, essentially adjacent to each other in evolutionary terms, but each one taking a wildly different trajectory through time. And so while the Notosuchians are gone, and animals like Armadillosuchus don't exist anywhere in the modern day, it is very important for us to help understand how evolution works, and that just because we feel like something hasn't evolved for millions of years, like the crocodiles, they had a lot more diversity than we might think on first glance. Hi everyone, thanks for watching! Again, like I mentioned during my first little bit, family's doing fine, just, you know, it's frustrating because I was supposed to try and get out and do field work, and now that's not happening. So we'll have to, I just have to reschedule stuff. So this video was the product of a couple, a couple of different ties for videos on what I should do for my next what the hell is this. And Armadillosuchus was one of the tied winners, but it was the first vote, so I just went with it. Um, I am going to put, for the patrons out there who do get the chance to vote, uh, I am going to put the other two that were tied on the, um, on next month's, because there does at least to be since there does seem to be at least some interest in those. Hopefully your review should be coming up shortly. Um, you know, my normal spiel that I'm gonna go through again. You know, be safe, take care, wear a mask, and don't go extinct.